We are counting down about eight hours to the fourth launch of South Korea's domestically produced Nuri space rocket. And for the latest from the site of the planned launch, I have my colleague Park Konu standing by live. Konu, welcome back. Now, precisely 24, year, 24 hours ago, Konu, you spoke of strong winds there. What's the weather like now? Is it suitable for a rocket launch into space? Yes, Sunny, I can say that it's pretty suitable for the rocket to launch. Um, the weather can be a major variable for rocket launches, but at this moment, conditions are generally fine. Unlike yesterday when we had strong winds and passing rain, although it's getting a bit colder, so we have to see. For But for now, it's pretty suitable. And if the average wind speed reaches 15 meters per second, or if wind gusts exceed 21 meters per second, all operations will immediately be halted as gusts could affect how the rocket is positioned, which would disrupt its planned flight trajectory. So we have to hope it doesn't go beyond the limit as the second duty mission had a one-day postponement due to strong winds. And there are also temperature limits the vehicle must withstand, which are between minus 10 and 35 degrees Celsius. Fortunately, that's not a concern for this time of year in Kohung. And as for the forecast, some rain accompanied by gusty winds is expected. But again, fortunately, this is likely to occur after the scheduled launch window at around 1 a.m. So it's unlikely to affect the mission. Right. Good to know, Connor. So how are the preparations for the planned launch proceeding then? So at the moment, most procedures, you know, remain on track. The installation of the Nudi rocket on the launch pad was done at around 11 a.m. today, this morning. So that's the same for connecting the rocket to the umbilical system, which supplies fuel and oxidizer, along with additional checkups to ensure there are no blockages or leaks in the system. Also today, there will be a comprehensive inspection focusing mainly on the fueling system and electrical components, of course. The actual loading of fuel and oxidizer will begin four hours prior to liftoff. As of now, the estimated launch window is between 12.54 and 1.14 a.m. Thursday, and the exact launch time will be finalized at 8.15 p.m. after the Launch Management Committee finishes reviewing the weather conditions, the possibility of collision with space objects, and the overall readiness of the rocket, which will, be, will, will begin at 7.30 p.m. And there are also backup dates running through December 4th in case of any bad weather conditions. Alongside, safety measures are also taking place with police and military personnel on duty near the space center. 27 large security ships are also dispatched regarding the fact that this is the first nighttime launch. And security is known to be especially strengthened starting two hours prior to liftoff through 10 minutes after. Well, now that the security is in place, hopefully the weather will be more accommodating in time for that launch. Meanwhile, Connor, what are some of the more notable aspects of this particular mission? So, first of all, this, as I mentioned, is it will be the first nighttime launch, providing ideal conditions for the main satellite to observe natural light displays or auroras. And that's, in fact, why the launch is held during that time, as it is the most suitable for the main satellite to reach the orbit for perfect aurora observation. And the mission's main satellite, along with 12 additional satellites up from the seven carried in previous launch two and a half years ago, is set to be deployed into orbit. The goal is to reach an altitude of 600 kilometers with an error range of about 6%, while the primary measure of success will be whether the main satellite reaches its designated orbit. The the estimated flight time is a little over 21 minutes, and the Korea Aerospace Administration will announce the results about an hour and 20 minutes after liftoff. And as manufacturing of this fourth vehicle was led entirely by the private company Hanwha Aerospace, this can mark a ma major milestone in transfer of technology and a broader shift toward a private sector driven la launch si system. And so that's all I have for you now, and I'll get you updated later on in our later newscasts. Back to you, Sunny. All right, Connor, thank you for the latest on Thursday's launch of South Korea's Nuri space rocket. Do keep us posted.